Welcome back, everyone, to another Eat Speed Live, the most delicious live stream in the Metroplex. I'm Bud Kennedy. And Steve Wilson. Easy Monkey is open in Fort Worth. Andrew Dilda has opened one of the most interesting restaurants. Uh, we've had a lot of new restaurants this year. The One, one of the most inter interesting ones with the most fascinating menus. I haven't been able to go yet, so I'm going to have to ask Andrew. Asian Tex Fusion Brisket Burnin' Bow Buns. <laughs> Cheeseburger, it is. fried rice. Uh, you're going to have to tell us about this. <laughs> it is. Uh, I like to say it's been the culmination and evolution of every restaurant that I've been a part of for the past 25 plus years here in DFW. Um, when I'd walk into those restaurants as a chef, exec chef, or even a wine cook, the worst thing the chef would hear or even my wine cooks or sous chefs would hear is I have an idea. So I, almost discuss, I had this great idea I came up with when I was driving into work today and they just go, okay, what venture are we going to go down on today? So this menu is a lot of, I have a great idea. Let's try it. Let's see if it works. And if it works, great. We'll put it on. We'll do it. It is what it is. But this menu has been kind of that evolution of, Hey, it feels, this is very personal. So if you guys were coming to my house, this is some of the food you, I would prepare. This is stuff that I've done. At my home, this is stuff that, you know, even inside the restaurant, we want it to feel like it's our home, coming into my house. So. so if I came to your house, you'd make Japanese chicken fried steak. And what is yes. that exactly? Yes, sir. We take an, a uh, Japanese style curry. And don't ask me to pronounce the proper name. I'm horrible with like phonetics and everything. That's one of my shortcomings. But we take a chicken fried steak. We have the Japanese yellow curry under it. And typically that curry is braised during that looks like a, that looks like an enchilada combination plate Let me look <laughs> we got some sticky rice with some furkaki rice seasoning on there and then we take in uh crispy fries some potatoes and some carrots and enoki mushrooms on the back side so we okay. do that just to add a little bit of texture because it's those vegetables are typically added in to the curry when it stews but we just wanted to have kind of take our twist on doing a chicken fried steak and i had a I had one of our uh, servers comment last night. Well, of course, a guy that's worked at Riata is going to do a chicken fried steak. And I was like, yeah, I kind of have to do a chicken fried steak just to maintain some street cred. So and it's it's become a top seller every night. And this yeah, is it, it sounds familiar with a twist. So we should explain right up front. I didn't really introduce you. You've been at Riata, Lonesome Dove, the Woodshed, and now you're with Monkey King. So you do uh, bring actually, all the. <laughs> uh, actually, Monkey King is kind of a. An adjacent project to this, um, I was a consulting culinary director for them for a little bit, but now this is my own little venture over here with Easy Monkey. Uh, uh, se separate entity, I got it. Yes, okay. Steve, what do you see on this menu that looks interesting, and what are you curious about? Um, I, I love bows, so the you know the uh, barbecue bows. Uh, you know, I definitely, I've always kind of like it's one of the things I'd like. You know, to be, be able to walk around some forth and get a bow, you know, yeah. that, you know, a play, some place that served a bow. So that's that's nice. And that's yeah. Brick's barbecue bow. Is that right? Yes, sir. It's Brick's uh, brisket inside there, um, and then we take a little bit of our own lemongrass and palm sugar glaze and put on it, and combine it with a little bit of our wonton sauce. And yeah, and that's like a you know, it's in a, a, a like a steamed dough ball type thing, right, for the bow. Yes, sir. You know, if you don't know what a bow is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're actually working on, uh, the chef and I are working on a, um, like a proper Chinese bauza, which is where you mm -hmm. put that meat inside of it, and wrap it with that same type of dough and steam mm -hmm. it. That's going to be something we'll probably do on in the winter as we get to like December, February. We'll probably They're also that. brisket wontons. So. Yes, brisket wontons. So that's actually with the wonton sauce and the brisket, if you eat it all together, this, my inspiration behind this is my wife and I met at a chili competition. And if you eat it all together, it tastes very much like Texas red chili. So it was kind of my throw and nod to her. She wanted to do chili, and I was like, okay, let me think about this. And this is what I came up with. So well, I hate to come up. Go ahead. Like chili. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was looking at this going, like, this tastes like chili? <laughs> it does. Like, the, so the sauce on the bottom has got a smoky element to it because we're using Wajio chilies, roasted jalapenos, uh, caramelized onions. Uh, beef stock, and then that stews down very much like you would do a chili. Mm -hmm. And then we have inside, we have a little bit more of that beef stock and the brisket from bricks. And then mm -hmm. we add in some ground beef, just to add a little bit more flavor. Mm -hmm. 
and juiciness well, to it. Texas Red, so. <laughs> I, it, I mean, on Uber Eats right now, we're doing a deal, buy one, get one on those. Mm -hmm. Is that what's on the Dan Dan Chili Dog? Uh, Dan Dan Chili Dog is just, it's a pork ragu. So we take uh, our ground pork, mix it with some of our chili crisp, um, a light beer, I won't name, and then uh, some toasted peanuts and ginger and garlic, and we just let that stew for a good hour or two. And that okay, I guess I've covered all the Texas basics here, chicken fried steak, <laughs> brisket, chili. I guess you have to tell us about the burger and the cheeseburger fried rice, too. So. The, uh, the burger, um, I kind of, like, to me, it was my favorite burger is Tommy's on yeah. Granbury Road. And Charlie's is on Granbury Charles, Road. Charlie's, I'm sorry, Charlie's. Yes, Charlie's. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite one because they always, it's that thin burger, thin bread, perfect. So that's what I wanted to do with this one is that same deal. I got, we're not using those big three inch tall brioche buns on top of it. It's got to have that right meat to bread ratio. And that's what we went with. And then we put dill pickle relish in there instead of sliced pickles because you need to get a bite of that. That vinegary goodness with all the fattiness of the beef so it kind of balances it all out and it's just a burger burger or does it have just a burger sauce? nothing it's got melted cheese on it smash fatty wow and we put put our sauce on it which is QP mayo ketchup and chili crisps all mixed together with a little bit of soy I thought it was gonna be a secret sauce. You had like that sauce. Is, I, I don't. I, it's kind of like a secret <laughs> yeah. sauce, but you know. You had like sauce in all caps. I'm going. Oh, it must be a secret sauce. <laughs> well, I mean, there's no secret. That's an, that's yeah. another trademark you can't use, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just trying to fill up that wall with cease and desist. You know. So. <laughs> but that's still you, another Asian fusion mix of stuff that, uh, like your whole menu. I mean, it's like it's like like some chefs went down a rabbit hole with a bunch of different ideas. <laughs> well, and that was really what I wanted to make this place is I wanted it to be a, where you have the young chefs in town that, you know, they, I'm sure they walk into the kitchens. I know when I was 18, 16, 18, starting in the industry here, I always walked in the kitchen and told the chef, Hey, I got an idea. Well, I want this to be that same thing for them to where it's like, okay, I have an idea. I want to see what a crazy combination would be like. I kind of want this to be that little bit of an SI restaurant, service industry restaurant. I want that our same with our beverage program. We have great cocktails. Tia Downey's doing our cocktails. My chef, my chef de cuisine, Sean Malik, he's been at Jamelli, Ellerbees. We have talent and we have the, and we put the good people in place so that we can do the cool, simple stuff and highlight the dish and not worry about hey do i need to put truffles on this everything i need because everybody's oh, please, always yeah. eating truffles you know um so we went the opposite direction of where everybody else is going right now you know we went well what is this cuisine what are we doing with asian food how are we combining these ingredients instead of like hey i need to open a seafood restaurant so i just want something different well i don't mean to sound leery of it it looks like a <laughs> lot of fun i'm really excited about coming because it, it, it looks like it's real, uh, it's real fun spirited. And is there a certain uh, spirit or, or feeling that you wanted to bring to this, this space on Magnolia? Yeah, I wanted it to bring, feel like you were coming into home with me. Like, I always tell people, hey, this is the food. If we we're hang, hanging out, having a barbecue, if we we're barbecuing or grilling, or you just came over for a dinner party, and these would be the appetizers or crazy stuff I would prepare and you're just like, Andrew, why are you? I don't know. Just, just try it. And a lot of this is from me coming up with crazy ideas at home and having friends over and okay, yeah, this works out. This is great. Let's do this. Um, a couple of dishes even came from pop-ups that I've done in the past. So it's just stuff that we've kind of progressed this into being a, a restaurant that feels like it's been around for 20 years but it's only been around for like three, four months. Wow. And we wanted that. And what we see, what we've seen now with the crowd that we're getting is we're getting an, you know, even we'll get some 20 year olds and we'll get all the way up to 40, you know, we get a broad demographic here, but everybody comments on, okay, well, we're playing nineties, early two thousands music in the dining room. And it becomes a com conversation starter and it drives the conversation. And we're watching people not be so much on their phones. They're actually sitting around the table and talking. We want to, we, and our menu is definitely geared towards 
sitting down and sharing. That's why we're more app heavy, smaller portions. So you can sit and share and you can get a couple, multiple different things. Our price point, nothing's over $20 right now on the menu. So you can come and eat and have a good night and not blow your budget right now. So uh, what are your hours and you know, what days? We're doing Wednesday through Sunday right now. We're going to add Tuesdays, middle of November, uh, maybe sooner. Uh, but Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday is 11 to 10. And then Friday, Saturday, Saturday is 11 to 11. What are the main sellers? And then what is your favorite dish on this very interesting menu? <laughs> the popular ones it's, is uh, the chicken fried steak, the ch cheeseburger fried rice. Because like you said, Bud, everybody comes in and said, I got to have that. I got to have yeah. that. And they do. They get it. And then uh, you put the words fried and cheeseburger together. Texas are gonna be on. <laughs> I think also the state fair is kind of helping drive that too. But um, Bricks Barbecue, the items with their wontons and the bow, are, we'll sell those on almost every table. Um, my favorite, personal favorite, the thing I eat a lot myself is uh, the wontons because. I've got to try them every day to make sure they're still good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gift and a curse. Um, but that's my favorite thing to have. You know, we haven't, told anybody, we, haven't told so anybody, we haven't told anybody, we haven't told you the location yet. We, I should have said right up front, 401 West Magnolia. This is the former fixture on the south side of Fort Worth. Yes. Uh, it's a historic building that was a, a, a Mexican restaurant for many years before it was fixture. Uh, and it's uh, about a block off South Main. So it's kind of between the trendy part of Magnolia and the trendy part of Maine. And it's, you know, pretty well located on the South side for, uh, you know, convenient to just about everybody. So uh, yeah. it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a good place for uh, being able to drop in. I don't remember what the corner is at Magnolia, but it's, it's Mag between Magnolia uh, and May. Magnolia and May, so it's, uh, you know, so it's between, uh, well, that's what your breakfast burger could be, the uh, the uh, <laughs> Magnolia and May, or just call yeah. it the Magnolia and May breakfast sandwich. Uh, yeah. And I, I asked you about that. I looked on the menu. It said M-C-E-Z-M, -M, and yes. I looked in Urban Dictionary. I couldn't find what that was. <laughs> no, we're not going too crazy with that stuff. It was more a throwback to, uh, uh, I'm a big Beastie Boys fan. So it was more of like an MCA of course. reverence. Um, but also we wanted, the, it, you know, a little behind the scenes. I wanted this space before it was fixed here and I just couldn't get my act together. I was young and didn't know how business worked. But as soon as Ben, um, and you know, sadly announced that he was closing, I reached out to him and said, all right, are you rebranding or are you just leaving the space? He's like, well, I'm leaving the space. And that's when I asked for the landlords, put me in touch with them because we got a great patio. I mean, I, in my opinion, my humble opinion, I think we've got one of the best patios on, my, on Magnolia, maybe excluding Shaw's, but we're pretty much up. We're pretty well up there. Um, and I think it was underutilized. And I think we're going to we've got some great uh, Tia's got some great drink plan for it. And I just can't wait to see what we do. What do you think? You, you're so well rounded. What do you think in general is going on in restaurants right now? We see. Uh, so many new seafood restaurants going up. We see different uh, Asian uh, cuisines finally coming in. Uh, you know, but uh, I, I mean, a lot of what I'm seeing is it looks like ideas off TikTok that people saw somewhere and said, hey, let's take this and put this sauce on it. And <laughs> it just looks like a made up thing. You actually come from a really well-rounded food background and chef's background for how many 20 years experience now in all these restaurants. What do you think's going on in restaurants? Here, and so Fort Worth is kind of this great anomaly that I love. It's a small town, but still a big town. And we're, I think we're at an exciting point in Fort Worth's evolution in culinary. I think we're at a really great impetus is that they're starting to, Fort Worth is really coming into its own as a food scene. It's starting to differentiate itself from Dallas in its own way. And we're seeing a lot of cool concepts come in. Like, you know, 10, 15 years ago, down on down from us, Walloons, 
you couldn't have told me that you could have put a a nice seafood restaurant right there. I would have laughed at you. Because when we watched Dick Van Dykes go away in the early 2000s, we thought nobody thought Magnolia was going to do anything. But you look at all the great food we have over here on the south side. You look at everything that's coming in in downtown, what Blaine's doing with Ostera 61, all the cool stuff that's coming in and watching how these guys are progressing it. I think the next – I'm really excited to see what Fort Worth's like in the next 10 to 15 years because I think we're on a great upward trajectory. There's a lot of good things that are coming in. There's going to be some stuff that's going to fall to the side. Yes, we're going to lose some great concepts or great chefs, but we're also going to see some really good stuff come out of it. And I've seen – you've seen – because we have all these great concepts, we're able to build our bench strength so that you get more line cooks that have been in this for 20 years that have the confidence to open their own restaurants because at the end of the day – we can have all the great chefs in Fort Worth that we want. We could have, you know, we can get Graham Elliott in here like we have. We can get Tim Webb in here. We can have all this. But if we're not developing our bench strength and we're not encouraging the next generation to think, hey, I have an idea, and you're not encouraging that idea or helping them shape that idea into something, then we're discounting what this whole, what we, why we do this. Yes, we do this as chefs to cook. We do this chef for instant gratification we do this for everything you go down the list of all the reasons and all the dysfunctions of being a chef but what's also cool for me and what i know true chefs appreciate is the fact that you are doing this to teach the new kids to teach the next the next generation to encourage you that these people that really want to be chefs and teach them how to develop a dish how to think about that how how to run it as a business not just as an ego treatment of, oh, I've got cool food and I've got great plates and I've spent $500 on this dish. You know, it's doing something really cool. Andrew, you really nailed it. You, uh, you know, you've got me excited about coming to your restaurant. You know food <laughs> and you know Fort Worth very well. You know Thank the market. Steve, do you have any more questions? No, I'm just, I just need to head over there because uh, I think we're both going to have to head over there. Menu. I, mean, I mean, it looks like something that that you know like the chefs would fix after the restaurant closes <laughs> that's, that's also what we've also compared it to so we're considering we're still thinking about how we're going to do this because this is something uh every, you know tia myself and sean want to do but we want to kind of do like a service industry quote unquote family meal on sunday nights to mm -hmm. where we do we totally change what we do is our I, we just have one item we do like say it could be butter chicken or we do spaghetti or lasagna or something like that, you know, just from six to 10 on Sunday. And you guys, this is all we're doing. You can come in and get this and you can have it. You know, this is what we'll do. And it will, we just haven't figured out how we're going to program that yet. But that's just an idea we've been kicking around. This is great. Easy Monkey is open, 401 West Magnolia. Chef Andrew Dilda, you're a great guest. Well, I hope we have you back again soon. Thank you very much. And until next time on the uh, Eats Beat live stream, Eats Beat Live, I'm Bud Kennedy. And Steve Wilson. <laughs>